Hello everyone and welcome to part 4, Divs and Spans. So in this lecture we're going to be showing you some examples of how to use a div and a span tag. However, keep in mind that we actually won't really be able to utilize them until we learn about CSS. Basically we're going to be using div and span tags to actually group together blocks of HTML. And the reason we want to group them together usually is to apply CSS to them. So keep that in mind as we learn about them. In this lecture, they probably won't seem to take any effect into account, but later on we will see how they are useful when adding in style of CSS. Let's jump to the Atom Text Editor just to show you how they work. Okay, so here I am at the Atom Text Editor. I also have my browser open. I'm a little zoomed in here so we can see the text clearly. Right now I just have a heading one here. Let me go ahead and show you what it would look like if we were to use a div tag. And div basically stands for a division and it allows you to tag together groups of elements into basically generic containers. So for instance, let's say I have another heading one, and this is something that says, we'll call it group one, and then I have a paragraph here that says, I want to be together in group one. So let me save that, refresh this, and we see we have divs and spans, group one, and then the paragraph says, I want to be together in group one. Later on, when we learn about CSS, what we want to do is add styles to particular elements in our HTML. And one way we can do that is by actually saying, okay, apply style number one, so for instance, the color red, uh, to all heading one tags. So that would just go along and say, hey, is this a heading one tag? Okay, this font color is now red. Is this a heading one tag? Okay, this font color is now red. But sometimes you actually don't want to do it by the actual element type. You want to do it by a specific division or a group of elements that you define. And the way you can do that, as we'll see later on in the CSS section, is by actually calling a div tag. And so the way it would work is you can see here I have div, and if I hit enter, notice that we automatically get this class to pop out here. And that's going to allow us to essentially name this division uh, after a class, and then we can apply styles to that class. And we can put whatever we want in that class. So for instance, I can now put this all here, give this class a name, such as something like group one, save this, and if I refresh this, we won't notice anything different here in the HTML. Later on when we learn about CSS, we'll learn how to actually add style to a division with a class name instead of just actual element tags. And that's basically what we're going to be using a division for. So right now this div tag by itself in HTML doesn't mean a whole lot. It's going to mean a lot more when we learn about CSS. So if this was a little unclear to you, especially with that class keyword, uh, don't worry about it too much. It's going to make a lot more sense in the future. I just want to introduce it now because it really is just HTML. It's not CSS. It's used in combination with CSS. Okay. And then the last thing I want to mention here is the span tag. And basically the span tag is almost the exact same thing as a division, except it's inline instead of uh, grabbing an entire container. So let's say we have this class, or this div division of group one. If I wanted to make essentially a little inline container to only apply effects to an inline section, so only apply effects, for instance, to these three letters, or three words here, be together and in, what I could do is wrap them in a span tag and then put whatever I want there to be in that span. And again, I'm going to save this and refresh this here. We don't notice any difference because we haven't actually applied any style to it. But just keep these two keywords in mind for tagging when we later learn about CSS. Okay, so again, not a whole lot to actually show here. Basics of this lecture is just to be aware of that there's a div tag and a span tag. If their usefulness doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you right now, don't worry about it. It will make a lot more sense when we actually read or reach the CSS section of the course. Okay, thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to part five, attributes. In this lecture, we'll be talking about HTML attributes, which allow us to actually add more information to an HTML tag. And this includes things such as adding a link to another web page or referencing an image. Let's get started on all of this by jumping to the Atom Text Editor and our browser. Okay, here I am back at the Atom Text Editor. 
and I'm still using the basics.html file. You can use whatever HTML file you want. You can also use the part 5 HTML attributes uh, file that comes with the actual course notes. Here I'm just going to be editing basics.html. And we're going to need a few things. One thing we'll need is an actual image file when we talk about setting an image inside of our HTML file. And to do that, what you should do is either find on your computer or download, or just use the PNG provided for you in the uh, notes, a .png file. And make sure you save it in the actual same directory that the HTML file you're working with is in. So you can see here, I have this basics.html file that I'm playing around with. And in the exact same directory, I have this PNG uh, picture here, this image file. So let me now close that and show you how we can actually insert an image into our HTML. And the way we do that is with an image tag. And that's going to be IMG. So I'm just going to click enter here. And you'll notice you get an automatic pop-up that says SRC and ALT. And that stands for source and alternate. And we're going to explain those in just a little bit. First thing is to notice that this is actually a self-closing tag, meaning everything here goes into this one image tag. You don't see, as we've seen before in the past, this closing tag. It just comes in one self-contained tag. So that's called a self-closing tag. And we can actually use this to source an image. So the thing I'll type here in SRC for the source of the image is just django.png. And then I'm going to do control S save and then refresh this page and you'll notice I actually get this image right here. And later on we'll learn about resizing images or uh, squeezing them or stretching them however we want. Right now we're just using the default image size. So you can see here I said image tag check out the source, django.png, and then an alternate, which we're about to discuss. Something to note here is that if this file is not in the exact same directory as this uh, HTML file, you may need to put in the entire file path. But we'll discuss that uh, much later on when we're talking about Django when we actually want to link to a specific folder that has all our images and all our documents in it. Right now, we'll keep things simple by keeping the actual image file in the same directory as the HTML file. Let's discuss this ALT or alternate. Basically what this is for is an alternate thing to display in case you can't find the PNG file. So for example, let's say I type in missing.png. Now if you look at my directory here, I only have django.png. I don't have some picture called missing.png, which means I'll actually uh, have a broken link. So if I refresh this, we see that classic broken link picture. And that basically says, hey, I couldn't find this missing.png, which means it's always a good idea to have something alternate here. So we can say something like, uh-oh, image not found. And we pass that in in quotes as a string that will pop up. Now, if I save that and refresh my page, it'll say something like, uh-oh, image not found next to this uh, little broken icon here. So that helps us out because later on when we're doing more advanced websites, I can say something like a little more specific, missing.png not found. So when I'm debugging my website or checking stuff up, I immediately know, oh, missing.png is not found. But you'll notice if I switch this back to django.png, which is there, and I refresh my website, I don't get that uh, alternate image or alternate text anymore, it does show up the django.png image. And that's really all there is to uh, sourcing an image. So you have the source SRC and the alternate. Let me comment that out and refresh this page. Whoops. Save this, then refresh my page. All right. So we just discussed how to use image tags. The next thing I want to talk about is an A tag, which allows us to actually reference another HTML file or another website. To really show this, however, I will create another HTML file. So I'm going to bring up back my directory and then right click on whatever folder I'm working on, this project folder. I'll add a new file and this new file I'm going to call it newpage.html. I'll hit enter and then this newpage.html, I'll start typing HTML, hit enter so I get all of that extra stuff. And then here on the body, I'm just gonna write a header or heading one that says, this is the new page. Save that. So I have two HTML files, basics.html that we've been working with, and this new page.html that has just a single heading in it. And if I copy this full path 
and put it in my browser, then I get this is the new page. Great. So what I want to do is try to link this new page.html into my original basics.html page. So let's do that. I'll come back to basics.html and to do this I'm going to use an A tag, which is just an anchor tag. And this is going to allow me to pass in a reference there, an href. And I will pass in the reference to this actual new page.html file. And I will say new page.html. And notice I don't have to pass in right now the full directory path or the full file path to this HTML file because it's in the same directory as my basics.html. If it was a different situation where this was in another folder somewhere else on my computer, I would have to specify with more detail the full file path. But we'll discuss full file paths and how you should actually create those across different operating systems when we talk about Django. Right now we'll keep things simple and make sure everything's in the same directory. Let me save this. So I have my href in my anchor tag, but notice this isn't self-closing. It has its own uh, closing tab, which means I can put stuff in between here. And this is basically going to be the text that is a clickable link. And that's all an anchor tag does. So I can say, click me. I will save this refresh and now I have this attributes and this click me and I can click on click me and that takes me to the new page so again with this anchor tag we keep a reference here have the text that we want to show when we say uh, click me and then click on that and this is the new page so that's really all an anchor tag is something to note you can reference things that are not just local on your computer and that goes for images as well. So let me show you what I mean by that. We can pass in an actual website. So I'll say something like http www.facebook.com and make sure you have to put in the full file path of http otherwise this won't work and now let's change this from click me to something like Facebook. We'll save that refresh over here and now I see Facebook. I click on Facebook and that actually takes me to the Facebook website. And my browser will actually self-correct this to make sure it's secure. So it goes to https uh, colon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com. All right, so that's how you can actually reference websites that are outside of your project folder. You can just pass in the full HTTP or HTTPS file path instead of a local file. And you can actually do this exact same thing for an image tag. So for example, if we see an image here, so I see this image of, let's say, these little triangles. I'm going to open this image in a new tab. Here I have the entire image path. So I'm going to actually just copy this image path. And then instead of django.png, I'm going to paste in that whole image path. Let's save that and go back to our original website refresh and we see here now we have that image. So I'm allowed to basically pass in an outside image and you can use something like Google image search to actually grab a link to an image and then use that as your source instead of having to save stuff locally. Now there'll be times when you definitely want to save stuff locally in case a link ever breaks online that way you make sure you always have a backup or you could just use the source online and then have maybe an alternate link or an alternate text show up. All right, so that's basically it as far as attributes and covering images and anchor tags. We've learned a ton of material to this point, so it's really time that we take a step back, make sure we've truly understood everything, and tackle an assessment exercise. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture where I explain the assessment. Hello everyone, and welcome to the HTML level one assessment. It's time to practice all your new skills. You're going to be viewing an HTML file and recreating it based off of what you see in the browser. The file we're going to be looking at is called HTML underscore level underscore one underscore assessment dot HTML. Let me show you how you should open this in your browser. That way you don't actually view the HTML file, you just view it in your browser. I'm going to jump to Atom Text Editor and my browser now. Okay, here I am at the Atom Text Editor and I have my browser open. Notice here that I'm looking at a new page.html. You can be looking at any HTML file that you've created. And what I've done is I've made sure that I have here in this directory the HTML level one assessment.html file. And you can find that in the course downloads. It's under the HTML level one folder. 
there is an HTML level one assessment that HTML file there. What you should do in order to do this exercise is don't click on this, but right click and then select copy full path and then paste that path into your browser and then hit enter. And this is what this website looks like. It says, welcome to my website. It says, I'm excited to eventually learn Django. Here's a link to the official Django website. And if we click on that link, it takes us to the actual official Django website, which is www.djangoproject.com. Notice it has HTTPS there. And going back, we see we also have a picture of the Python logo. And then it says, here are three reasons Django is cool. One, it's ridiculously fast, it's reassuringly secure, and it's exceedingly scalable. And then there's a bonus optional extra credit. So what you're going to be doing is in your own HTML file, you're going to try to recreate this. So think of it while you're looking at this HTML website, what kind of tag should this have? And what kind of tag should these three lines have? And notice one of them is a link to another website. So think about what kind of attribute or tag that specific link should have. And then you'll notice that we also have this picture of the Python logo. What I want you to do is either download a picture of the Python logo onto your computer and then set the link locally. Or what's also good practice is using the image tags we've learned about is to actually set the source to a image file that's hosted online, which is actually what the solutions do. And then you'll notice here we have a list. It's a ordered list, so one, two, three. And then there's finally a bonus or optional X credit which is, can you figure out how to make a picture into a link? So this first picture, Python, nothing happens if I click on it, but this last one, Django, notice how it's clickable. So if I click on that picture, it will actually take me to the Django project documentation, just like this top link did. So that's extra credit to figure out how to actually make a picture into a link. We didn't cover that. I'll cover that in the solution. So that's just a bonus. Again, all you're doing is you're copying this file path into your browser, and then in this HTML file, try to manually recreate what's going on here. And I'm going to be walking through this in the next lecture for the solutions. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you there. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the assessment solutions lecture for the HTML level one section. Let's get right to it by hopping to Atom Text Editor in our browser. Okay, here I have the Atom Text Editor in my browser, and I have two files open. One is the actual exercise file, this HTML level one assessment, and I have this basics.html file open here in another tab. And that's what I'm going to be editing to try to match what the exercise file looks like. So let's take it step by step. The first thing I notice here in the exercise file is that my tab says exercise title. And that's a little hint that we have to actually put in a title here. So let's match that up. We'll say exercise title, save, and then refreshing this, now I see exercise title, and it matches the exercise. And then we can continue on with the rest of the body of the HTML. And here we have welcome to my website, and hopefully you're able to recognize that that's a heading one. So we'll say welcome to my website there. And then we have a paragraph that says, I'm excited to eventually learn Django. So let's add that in. I'm excited to, we'll just say learn Django. And let's add a couple more lines to the body. And I'm going to collapse the directory tree so we get a little more room here to see. Great. And then here is a little bit trickier. It says, here's the link to the official Django website. And hopefully you remember from the attributes lecture that I can use an anchor tag to actually put in a link. And an anchor tag just looks like an A. Whoops, not a capital A, just a lowercase a. And we need to add our href. So that's going to be a link to the official website so let me put that in. That's going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www dot Django project dot com. And if you needed a reference for that, all you had to do was click on that link and then mark down the URL. And then I want to add in the actual text. And I can do this on multiple lines instead of just uh, one single long line. It's really up to you. But we'll say here is a link to the official Django website. I'm going to save that and then refresh my basics.html. And so far it's looking pretty good. The reason it's larger right now is because I'm more zoomed in and that's just for clarity. So I could zoom in here and see more detail. 
That way it's a little easier for you, the student, to view my screen. So that's all the difference in the actual sizing, but the actual elements themselves are still the same. And then we have another paragraph that says, here's a picture of the Python logo. Let's add that in. And we can tell it's another paragraph because it's starting on a new line or a new block. So we'll say, here is a pic of the Python logo. And then I want to add in a picture here. And remember, to add in a picture or an image, we use an image tag. And that's just going to be IMG. And here's our image tag. And what we need is a source for this image tag. And what you can do is just use Google Images to find that source. So I will open up a new tab to Google Images and search for Python logo, which looks something like this. And I can select any of these. And I just click on this. I click on View Image, and then just copy and paste this into my source. So let me save that and refresh this. And here's the picture of the Python logo. Looks like everything's matching correctly. Now let's come back here and continue on with the rest of the body. So I have my image set up. And now I have another paragraph that says, here are three reasons Django is cool. And notice here we have an ordered list. And remember for an ordered list, we just type OL and then each element in the list is an LI or a list element. And I'm just going to paraphrase here. I'll say it's because it's fast, secure, and the last one will be scalable. And I'm saving a lot of time just by using the auto completion of Atom Text Editor. So let's save that, refresh our basics page, and here we can see the ordered list is now included. And then finally, the bonus optional extra credit was, can you figure out how to make a picture a link? And basically what we have to do is combine an anchor tag with an image tag. So usually with the anchor tags, we had an href to the actual website link, and then we had some text. What we're going to do is instead of text here, put in an image tag. And hopefully you're able to figure it out. If you weren't able to, it's not a big deal. You will learn now. I'll put in the anchor tag, and the href I want is again to the actual Django project website. So I can just copy and paste this from that first link. There we go. And then inside of this anchor tag, instead of text, I want to put in an actual image tag. So I will say IMG. There is my image and the source is going to be this Django. So I'll just come back to Google Images and search here for Django logo. And here's a Django logo. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Click on either one of them, click view image, and then copy this and paste it in as the source. Save this. Let's reload our basics.html. And here I have a very large image, but that's okay. Later on, we'll learn how to resize images. But if I click on an image, the important part is it takes me to HTTPS, www.djangoproject.com. And that's basically all you had to do. Hopefully you felt comfortable enough that you could recognize what type of elements were in a website and duplicate them in your own HTML file. That's really the point of this exercise, being able to look at a website, a very basic website and say, oh, I know what I can do in HTML to reproduce that. All right, that's it for HTML level one. It should have been pretty straightforward and pretty basic as far as everything we've covered. Coming up next in the sections is HTML level two, where we're gonna learn even more about HTML so we can know enough to lead into CSS, which will allow us to then style the HTML. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next section of the course.